healing, prosperity, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us now. It's your season. It's your time. Hear and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey everyone, and welcome to the One Touch Ministries broadcast. Yes. You're right here with us on a good, good, good Friday afternoon. It is yes. 1.30, and let me tell you, we have a word and a show that's here for you. And it's coming by your prophetess, <laughs> prophetess Naditra Young. Oh she is goodness. here, she is in the building, and she's got a powerful Word Glory to God. I felt God that thing. <laughs> for you today. <laughs> you go ahead and agree on honey. <laughs> uh, well, God bless everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to be in your home today. Yes. Listen, I know God has got a word for you, and it's going to bless your life. It's going to change the atmosphere. It's going to turn things around. Matter of fact, it's getting ready to give you a breakthrough. Yes. Okay? So listen, sit back and relax and watch God do what he does best just for you. Yes, and I'm so excited. And so many things are going on. And hey, uh, we're entering to the month of August, and we're going to be vacationing. Yes! And we're going to be, woo, I'm telling you, we're just going to have some fun in this month. Yes. This is my birthday month. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> and trust me, we're going to celebrate the king. We're going to celebrate me. Most of all, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're no. going to have some great time. <laughs> and we want to encourage you as well yes. that you, all through the pandemic and everything that's been going on, yes. take some time for mm. your family. That's right. That is the word of encouragement. I want to get you that. The prophet is she's preaching today. But my word of <laughs> encouragement right. for you today, find you a beach. Yes. Find you a lake. Find your hotel room to stay in. Yes. And go have some awesome time with your family. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen, the month of August, we just want you to take the time out to enjoy and have balance. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. So, listen. Um... We're just going to show you our brief intro really quick, our brief intro song. And we're going to be right back with a special word from Prophetess Nighty Trio. Amen. We want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives. everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Prophetess Naditra Young and I am once again super excited about what God has for you. God has a great word for you today and I just praise God because I have been the, have the opportunity to be able to give you the word today. God is so good and he is amazing. But before we get started, let us go to the throne of grace and ask God to really bless us today so that that we can be able to hear exactly what God wants us to hear. You'll be able to hear exactly and, and see exactly what God wants you to see. So we're excited today. But Father, we thank you right now. God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for everything that you have been doing in our lives, God. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do right now, God. God, open our ears so that we can hear you, God. Open our eyes so that we can see you, God. Allow us to experience a true shift, a true move of God today, God. And we just thank you, God, for 
each and every person that is viewing. Right now, God, we ask you to go into the homes today, God. Bless the people, God. Heal them, strengthen them, and do what needs to be done. Allow this broadcast to be a blessing to the people of God, your people, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Oh, my God, from Zion. I'm so excited. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and get right into the word. But before we get into the word, today I am actually doing a series. Um, last uh, Two weeks ago I did a series on prioritizing your goals, prioritizing the vision. And I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to continue with prioritizing the goals prioritizing the vision and the reason why we're saying prioritize but because we must put things into categories we must put things in order in order for us to see the move of God the hand of God move in every situation sometimes when we have a scattered mind a scattered brain or scattered thoughts or scattered scattered vision it, it, it puts us in a position where you don't really begin to see anything actually moving about because everything is simply in a scatter mode so God is trying to bring order to the kingdom he's trying to bring order to his people order to the leaders of God we want to lead we want to be successful we want to be the one that everybody can depend on but if we're scattered and if we're all in a discombobulated state it's really hard for us to be able to lead properly so God is giving me antidotes he's giving me the blueprint he's giving me information with and instructions and directions on how to talk to his people and how to give his people not only just instructions but show them how print by print uh, 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 walk by walk how to prioritize their goals prioritize the vision that God has put into your life today my God from Zion so we're prioritizing today Hallelujah. We're putting things in order. Hallelujah. We're trying to hear from God more and, and, and take the, the directions and the instructions that God has given us and put them into our vision and make sure that we execute this thing properly. Glory to God. If you will go with me the Proverbs, and we're going to go to Proverbs, the sixth chapter, and we're going to be talking about the 16th through the 19th verse. I was talking um, two weeks ago in reference to the, the, the six things that the Lord hates. And there's seven things that he cannot stand. And I was speaking to you about that because that's a part of prioritizing the goal. Prioritizing, my God, the vision. Glory to God. And, and a lot of times we don't want to talk about of the priority of, of actually putting things together. We don't want to talk about the things that God hates. We really just want to talk about all the blessings and the promises. But there's things that God hates. There's things that he does not like. There are things and habits and issues that we carry that he wants us to get rid of so that we can lead properly. And, and I was speaking about um, two of the things. And one of the things that he cannot stand is a proud look. A person who's prideful a person who's prideful he doesn't like a proud person and not a not only that he doesn't like a person who has a lying tongue my god from zion and i believe we're going to go right back into and i'm just going to recap just slightly on what he uh, uh gave me so that you can have that information one of the things, like I said, that God cannot stand, one of the things that he hates the most is a pride, a proud person, a person who carries a lot of pride, who's so prideful that they cannot, my God from Zion, can't receive correction. Oh, glory to God. Always wearing the spirit of offense. I talk about it being the fabric of offense. I talk about it being the clothing of offense. Because then what I mean by the clothing and the fabric, meaning... Um, some of us like uh, polyester. Some of us like cotton. And when you have cotton, you feel real good. When you wear the spirit of offense on you, that's like the spirit of cotton that sits on you, that cotton. And you get comfortable with wearing that fabric, my God, from Zion. And what happens is you wind up getting everything 
everything made in that particular fabric. Your t-shirt is made in a uh, uh, cotton fabric. Your pants is made in the cotton fabric. Uh, 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 your shoes uh, have that cottony feeling soft, soft soles. Uh, my God. Then your hat, my God, hallelujah, is a soft kind of hat. And it reminds you of cotton. So those are fabrics. Those are textures. Uh, and my God, when you wear the spirit of offense on you, it causes you to have a proud spirit. It causes you have to have a proud outlook. It causes you to feel like everybody, the grandmama, the sister, the brother, the aunties and the uncles, everybody in the family is always against you. Everybody's always judging. My God, from Zion. And God told me to tell you today, nobody's judging you, but God is sending people to correct you. We need correction today. A lot of us don't like the word correction. We take it as somebody judging. Somebody's giving their opinion about us. Right, we understand people's opinion of you does not matter, but God has people who are appointed to you to correct you. If your pastor corrects you, it's not your job to be offended. Oh, glory to God. If your spiritual mother, your spiritual father corrects you, it is not your job to be offended. If your mentor, somebody that you hold close to your heart, someone who uh, 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 actually um, gives you constructive criticism, it's not your job, my God from Zion, to be offended. Glory to God. Then we're going to move down to the lying tongue. My God, God hates a lying tongue. He hates uh, someone who lies. That is uh, uh, number two. He hates people who make up stories that lie, that just can't tell the truth at any time. We call them in the world uh, pathological liars. Uh, people who just lie just to lie. They wake up with a lie. They go down with a lie. They uh, 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 they cross their legs with a lie. Uh, 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 they move about. They fix dinner with a lie. God said it's time out for the lying. God wants leaders who are willing to be not only transparent but willing to tell the truth. Not just about everybody else but about themselves. Uh, I praise God today because God has given me a spirit of transparency Transparency. I praise God because I'm able to be transparent, not just with my family, not just people in my circle, not just people that I'm very, very close to or I hold near and dear to my heart. God said, he said, I want you to learn how to be transparent, hallelujah, to the people that I have put and appointed to you to shepherd up. Oh, glory to God. I feel my help coming on. God said, I want you to learn how to be transparent. I want you to share your story. We all have a story today. We all have a testimony. And God said he wants you to be able to release, my God, your testimony. Your testimony will not just, my God from Zion, heal you, but it can heal somebody else. Because a lot of times the people of God need to hear somebody else is going through what they're going through and how they came out. Mm. But if you keep your story to yourself, uh, if you keep your testimony to yourself, making it seem like you've never been through nothing or you never faced a hard time, what happens is a lot of times this goes, <laughs> oh my God from Zion, a lot of things start to transpire. People uh, uh, start looking at you as, well, I guess she never goes through anything. <laughs> I guess she would never understand. Then it makes it hard as a member. My God, it makes it hard for the members to come to the pastor, the leader, the person in charge to actually relate. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story. I, I, I remember the other day I was calling a young lady and I was calling to tell her happy birthday. And she, she called, I mean, I spoke to her and she was on the phone with me. I said, hello, dear. I just called to say happy birthday and God bless you. And she said to me, she said, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. She said, I'm here with my family. I said, well, I will not hold you. I said, I just wanted to call and say hello and I love you and happy birthday. She turned to her family. She said, guess what? Prophetess Naditra is on the phone. 
And they were like, oh, okay, tell her I said hello. And she turned to her family. She said, I love this woman of God. She said, because why? She shares her testimony with us. And she shares it all over the world. And people are getting healed from it. And she said, I'm one of the ones that is getting healed. She said, and then I go tell her testimony to other people to let them get healed. And I praise God that blessed my entire life. If nothing else blessed me that day, that blessed me other than God taking his hand and waking me up in the morning. That literally blessed my entire life because why? I now know that uh, I'm doing the will of God because I already knew that God told me to be one of the ones to become a truth teller. You've got to be able to tell the truth. And God showed me through that young lady, giving me confirmation that I was on the right track. So if you are a transparent leader today, or you're a transparent mentor, or a transparent uh, spiritual mother and father, God bless you. You're on the right track. Glory to God. Now I'm going to go down to number three. Number three, and I want to link this up with some some of the, uh, of the goal prioritizing that God has given me. Now, um, with with number one being a uh, pride, going back to number one real fast, um, I linked that up with a professional development. And the reason why I linked that up with professional development, because when you're in a professional realm, you have to be able to be relatable. You have to be able to be um, in a position where people can come to you so you have to become approachable then i linked the lying tongue with a personal development and the reason why i linked lying tongue with a personal development because that's personal that's something that has to do with you as an individual and if you are a liar people won't trust you and it will affect your personal development Meaning your audience, the people who cling to you, the people that listen to you, it will affect it. So this is why I link those two up together. Now the third one was hands to kill innocent people. Now I link this up with healthy mind, uh, I'm sorry, health and fitness, which makes me say you got to not only just have a healthy body, healthy temple, but your mind has to be healthy as well. Meaning you have to have good thoughts, meaning you cannot always create negative stories in your head. Oh, yes, huh? I said that. Negative stories in your head. We as people, we go through things. And I understand we go through things. And sometimes life can become hard. And I understand sometimes things can be overwhelming for you. But what happens is we uh, 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 make up stories um, that people don't like us. People don't, uh, um, people are coming for me. Uh, um, that's, once again, the spirit of offense huh, that you're wearing. It's the fabric that you wear. And you actually actually like it it's comfortable like cotton it's soft like cotton why because it feels real good and what happens with the spirit of offense you wear it so well you wear it everywhere you go you never take it off and it becomes so comfortable what happens is you forget that you still have it on so God is trying to heal you from the spirit of offense today take that nasty offensive cotton off today in Jesus name. So I, I, I linked health and fitness with um, hands to kill innocent people. That's one of the things that God hates. And the reason why, because if your mind is in a great place, you won't put innocent people in danger. Ooh, glory to God. You won't Put innocent people in danger. And if your mind is healthy, your body will begin to be healthy. Why? Because then you're going to think good things. Then you're going to want to eat good things. And not only also eating good things, when you're healthy, what happens? Not healthy just in the mind, but when you're healthy in your body, it allows you to be able to do the will of God in proper order order it allows you to be able to have the stamina that you need my god from zion to be able to withstand
withstand, hallelujah, the trials and tribulations that ministry can bring you. Glory to God, hallelujah. Cause see, when you're uh, 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 when you're overweight or, or when you're when you're not uh, healthy, you're not taking care of yourself. What happens is you get tired real fast. Uh, God is not calling for us to be tired in this season. God is calling for us to be ready, fit, uh, and able and healthy to hallelujah go through uh, go through things uh, go through the battle fight this war hallelujah and come out a winner in Jesus name uh, then I'm gonna go down to the number four hallelujah mm -mm -mm. <laughs> one of the other things that God can't stand uh, one of the things he hates is minds uh, hallelujah that think of evil. I link that also uh, with uh, my God health and fitness because we were talking about the mind. Hallelujah. Your mind has to be in order so that it calls you to think of good things. Uh, it'll cause you hallelujah not to wear the fabric uh, not to wear the fabric of offense. Uh, glory to God. It won't even set well on you. Glory to God because when you have a healthy mind uh, you think of good things. Uh, great things will occur great things huh? success huh? will occur because then what happens is with your mind you won't even have time to think of what your enemies are doing behind your back huh? glory to god your mind is so focused on what god has for you you don't have time my god from that i said you don't have time to worry about what they say on you say about you on facebook you won't have time huh, to even engage in any negative conversation because why your mind uh, glory to god uh, is straight on jesus oh glory to god i feel my help coming on hallelujah number five hallelujah feet that are quick to do evil. God does not like people who uh, are busy bodies. Uh, people that are always in somebody else's business. Uh, somebody else's land. Uh, always want to know the flavor uh, of their drink. Uh, God is calling for you to be still and know that he is God. Uh, walk softly uh, and know that he is God. Hallelujah. God is calling for you. Hallelujah. To be in a position where you're not always in somebody else's information uh, not always trying to find out what's going on with somebody else God is calling for you uh, to stand still worry about yourself take care of your home make sure hallelujah that you are right in the mind uh, make sure that your body is in a good tip top shape uh, glory to God uh, hallelujah make sure that your uh, 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 your personal development that you're not lying uh, and you're not telling stories uh, you're not creating things uh, make sure that your professional development hallelujah is in order where you're able to uh, gather people together get a good audience uh, and get people to understand the vision that God has given to you this is called prioritizing goals and prioritizing visions glory to God number six I'm gonna move along Huh. Hallelujah. Uh, a, a witness huh, who lies huh, and, and someone who starts arguments. Huh. God wants you huh, to stop starting arguments inside the families. Huh. God doesn't want you to be so busy huh, that you go into church over here. You go to the A church and you go to the B church and, and you go to the C church. Every church you go to, you're always in the midst of confusion. My God, God is calling for you huh, to just be still. Zip your lips. Huh. Keep quiet sometimes. Huh. Just because you know doesn't mean that you have to spread it. Huh. God God is calling for you, huh? glory to God, to be able to see blessings and curses can't come out of the same mouth, huh? glory to God. God is calling for us huh? not to be people who lie and start arguments huh? and confusion in the house, huh? in the kingdom, huh? in our families, huh? in the spiritual connections that we have with God's people. God is calling for us huh? to be sweet in our spirit, to love people in spite of it all we have to learn how to love huh. we have to learn how to love right now right where you are if you say well some of these things are 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 are, are me hmm. 
and, and I just want to quickly say, I, I will link number six with hobbies. Witness, uh, 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 witnesses who lie and who start arguments among family. I will link that up with hobbies. And the reason why I say that is because if you will go get a hobby, if you will go find something positive to do, something that interests you other than gossiping, you'll put yourself in a position where you won't have time to start arguments and frustration amongst the kingdom, your family. God is calling for us, calling for us to do better. God is calling for our leaders to do better. We want to lead, but we haven't developed any type of characteristics. We haven't developed any type of skills. We haven't mastered anything other than preaching. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. You've mastered the entertainment of preaching. You have mastered the movement of preaching. But have you mastered your personal development, your professional development, your health, your fitness? Have you mastered any of that? Have you mastered having a hobby? Have you mastered your, your finances? So these are the things that a God is God is actually saying to us as leaders, as people of God. We always want to be in the forefront. But what have you mastered? This is prioritizing goals and prioritizing vision. If God is giving you a vision, it's time for you to get it in order. So when the next person that's your successor is in place, to pass off the baton, they'll see the vision and they will follow it properly. We praise God today. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for allowing me to speak the word. Father, I thank you for how you're going to continue to teach us how to prioritize our goals and prioritize the vision. Father, we want to be in your will. Not my will, but your will shall be done. In my life, in their life as well, Father. God, we thank you for the opportunity. God, we thank you right now. If there's any sick among us, God, we ask you to heal. We ask you to heal, God. When they go back to the doctors, hallelujah, they will start to see a change. A miracle has occurred. In the name of Jesus. Father, if there's anyone that wants to repent right now, Father, I ask you to open up the door for them to repent. So if you're ready to repent right now, just begin to say, Father, I repent. I repent my sins to you, Father. Cleanse me, mold me, and make me to be what you would have me to be. Not my will, but your will shall be done in my life. Take full control of me, God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. If you said that with me today, I'm telling you God has blessed you and you have repented. And now it's time for you to prioritize your goals and the vision that God has given you. I praise God for you. I thank you for joining. And may heaven smile upon you. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, and until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.